ask questions like this in interviews, like uh, how many flip flops will be used in the first code, and how many flip flip flops do we use in second code? Uh, can anyone analyze and tell how many flip flops will be required in the first code here? Talking about one flip flop, one flop. Can you repeat again? And the blocking assignment is there. Yes, yes. One, one flip flop will be required. Okay. For non blocking, uh, two flip flops will be required. Yes. Uh, can you explain how this happens? Can anyone explain? I mean, blocking you block the statement, that's why right. E goes to E. Uh, okay, so one can it blocking, that's why different flip flops are required. Yes, uh, so here in the first code, uh, A will be assigned to B and then B will be assigned to C. So it is like it is happening, sequential execution is happening one after the another. So B, A will be stored in B and then B will be assigned to C, right? So we will need only one flip-flop to store the value of C here in the first code. Whereas in the second code, uh, the parallel execution happens. That is, B, A will be assigned to B at the same time B will be assigned to C, right? So we will be requiring two flip-flops in the case of second code. So they will be giving you um, a, a piece of code like this and ask you like how many flip flops do we require. So this question is like very important in interview because um, most probably they will be asking about flip flops. Uh, yeah, in, in any interview, there will, there will be definitely one question on flops. Either they'll ask you to draw waveform of D flip flop or they'll ask you to write a code for D flip flop. If not, they will be either asking you uh, to, uh, uh, they will ask you to write one uh, counter using flip flop. Like uh, you should be able to do it. So we'll discuss about uh, the questions in uh, the class about D flip uh, we will uh, we can discuss about um, drawing a counter using flip flop. They will mainly ask you to do the flip flop there, so we can discuss about it in further classes. Uh, can anyone tell me what is a ring oscillator? Is you there? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, so I'll explain you. A ring oscillator is nothing but odd number of NOT gates connected one after the another. So you can see this is the ring oscillator. This is how the ring oscillator looks like. So uh, as the sub question they have given, given us, what would be the frequency of the ring oscillator implemented using three NOT gates if each gate has a delay of two picoseconds, right? So uh, each gate, so we are using three not gates here and each gate has two picoseconds of delay. So let's uh, calculate, we have to find the frequency of the ring oscillator now. So to find the frequency, we have a uh, formula is one by time period, right? Like we have uh, three ring oscillators, three in inverters and the delay is two. So we will uh, mention it as six times the inverter delay, right? So that is six into two. So we will be getting the following input. Uh, you, you can just make a note of this, this form. I'll be sending you the PPT. Yes, uh, I'll be sharing you the PPT. So can anyone uh, tell me what will be displayed here? Uh, what will be the alpha and beta value that will be displayed here? Yes, you can try this code. Like what will be the alpha and beta value that will be displayed over here at the end of
Ma'am, I think alpha will be three and uh, beta will be seven. Okay, can you recheck how you got three and seven again? Ma'am, first blocking assignment will be three, so alpha value will be four minus one will be three, and uh, then non-blocking will start. So then beta okay. value will be four plus three seven, like that time. Uh, any other answers, guys? Six, Three seven, ma'am. Three and seven. seven. Answers are beta alpha value and then B value will be Your alpha value will be four here. Okay, so alpha value uh, C. So a uh, beta value three will be displayed uh, here, and then here, here you have alpha is equal to alpha minus one. Again, here a blocking assignment is there. So first blocking assignment will be executed, right? Uh, so here we have the blocking assignment that is alpha is equal to alpha minus one. So we will be getting beta is equal to three and again alpha is equal to three. That will be displayed. You can just try it, uh, try different values and different yes. equations yeah. like this uh, and uh, practice. So uh, practice on uh, uh, Xilinx uh, or EDA playground and ch check uh, display the values or try to display and so you will understand how it which uh, which gets executed first you will be understanding it so you guys can practice a different variety of codes like this. So in the next question, can anyone tell me what is uh, wrong here? The code is wrong. Uh, like, can you anyone tell me what's wrong with the code? Ma'am, can you explain the previous question again because your voice is breaking too much? Okay, uh, sure. Uh, now am I audible? Uh, yes, now audible. Okay. So, blocking assignment And then you will we will be going with uh, after that we'll be going with non-blocking assignments. First blocking assignments will be executed in the code, right? So uh, beta is equal to three, alpha is equal to four, and then here beta is equal to three. So the next one here we have alpha again with a blocking assignment here. So alpha is alpha minus one. So that is four minus one. So alpha value will be getting it as three, and then beta is three here. That will be displayed. Even before the non-blocking assignments are executed, we'll be getting this, right? This is the value we'll be getting. You can try it with Xilinx and also EDA Playground. I'll be sharing the same code and you can check the corresponding outputs that will be displayed. Shall I move to the next question? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, just so wait what for, is yeah, just wait. Uh, uh, can you repeat again? Yes. Uh, or in the sensitivity list, D, D is also an input that is not mentioned. So there will be uh, that will cause an error. You will not be getting the uh, responding value for E because whenever a D value changes, right, <coughs> we will be get, uh, E value doesn't change whenever D value changes. So it will cause it will give you a completely wrong answer. Uh, then yeah, that is the answer. D is not included sensitivity list. So we can go through one aptitude question that will be asked uh, in, in a verification like in any interviews basically. 
so there is a triangle and on it there are three ants one of each one in the each corner and they are free to move any side of the triangle mention answer 6 by explain how you got 6 by 8 ma'am uh, ant moves in uh, any one of the direction like uh, it should be in the right or left let's take right as a uh, one and left as zero it okay. means it contains uh, eight combinations for uh, every ant it moves in one direction same direction means it moves in all in left means all are zeros and if it moves in right, right. means all are ones yes. remaining are all the collides that's the 6 okay. by 8 okay uh yes uh, so we will have a uh, let me share my uh, white board uh guys whiteboard is the thing so we have ants at each corner face each corner let's consider an ant or this is an ant here so of the combinations that is eight there are eight combinations right so uh what we have so probably that ants will fail the so let's take two directions this clockwise direction and another one anti clockwise direction see and all the smooth clockwise right they will not collide so all the ants move anti clockwise they will not collide from both clockwise or anti be not be colliding that is ants were not colliding right that is when they all move clockwise direction or when they all move anti clockwise direction that is uh, the probability of ants not colliding is 2 by 8 so 2 uh, by 8 so we can find out the probability of ants colliding will be like 8 minus 2 is 6 that is 6 by 8 we can do it either two ways i i hope you guys understood this uh, uh this puzzle so this will be this will be asked in any of the interviews so make sure you guys go through puzzles like this every day okay guys that's all for today uh, tomorrow we can continue with uh, mure and mile board for uh, um, for different uh, sequences we can do um, fsm codes tomorrow Thanks for joining.